as we come together to worship God, we come and open the Bible, the Word of God. And we light the candle. Some of you may have noticed our new Easter candle, the symbol that Christ is with us. So as we gather together in our different places, we acknowledge that the land we stand on belongs to God and to those who have been before us. So we say that this land is God's land and God's spirit dwells here. We acknowledge the people of the Kulin Nation, traditional custodians under this land, uh, of this land under God. And we commit ourselves again to working for reconciliation in this land. So welcome. Welcome to you all as we begin again worship in the dispersed. Hopefully our internet is working better this morning. Um, we've done a couple of other little things around sound, so hopefully that will make things a little bit easier as well. But welcome to wherever you may be as you join us and worship together. Let us use our call to worship similarly as we did last week some responsive time for you, and then a prayer to begin with. So let us together. Tuneful singers and tone deaf with such voices as we have. We worship God the Father. Able and bless able God. With such abilities as we have, we worship God the Son. Those who have and those who don't, with such finances as we have, we worship God the Spirit. From our cluttered lives to your spacious presence, gracious God, we gladly come. From our noise-filled world to your quiet centre, gracious God, we gladly gather. From our time-bound days to your timeless calm, gracious God, we gladly gather and meet. So let's sing together from all who dwell below the skies.
Let us pray. Eternal God of all time, of all places, we praise you. How can we in our time-bound lives begin to see what it means to say that you are eternal? Except perhaps that with you is forever. Much more than we could imagine or suppose. And that without you is never. Eternal God of all time, of all places, we praise you. How can we not find our hearts lifted, our souls ablaze, our minds amazed that you entered our time and our place in Jesus? Your eternal word made flesh, made us. Eternal God of all time, of all places, we praise you. Amen. We continue our stories now as we go through Acts and uh, we are running from Acts chapter 3. Let us gather around God's word together. Today's reading comes from Acts 3, 1 to 10. One day, Peter and John were going up to the temple at the hour of prayer, at three o'clock in the afternoon, and a man lame from birth was being carried in. People would lay him daily at the gate of the temple, called the Beautiful Gate, so that he could ask for alms from those entering the temple. When he saw Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked them for alms. Peter looked intently at him, as did John, and said, Look at us. And he fixed his attention on them, expecting to receive something from them. But Peter said, I have no silver or gold, but what I have I give you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Stand up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and raised him up, and immediately his feet and ankles were made strong. Jumping up, he stood and began to walk, and he entered the temple with them, walking and leaping and praising God. All the people saw him walking and praising God, and they recognised him as the one who used to sit and ask for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple, and they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. In this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Good morning. Hello children and families at uh, home. Good to see you, albeit virtually. Well, I guess you see me and, and I don't see you, but I, I remember what you guys look like, so moving on. Uh, friends, today we're still looking at the book of Acts, which looks at the birth of God's church and the spread of the good news across the world. Peter and John, as the reading just said, were walking along and found a man sitting by a gate. He was begging for money, but what Peter gave him was worth even more than money. This story, yes, is about healing, but it's also about relationships. So, now we're going to play a fun game together. I wonder if at home you can see these three cups that I have here. And I'm going to invite our stand-in child for the day, Josh, to come on down and play the game with us. Good morning, Josh. Good morning. How are you? Uh, good. Good morning, folks. Excellent. Good. Uh, ex wonderful. So, Josh, under the cups, um, I'm going to mix them around and you're going to have a series of three choices, right? Some of them may be good, some of them may be bad, you know, they'll all be surprising. And then at the end, you have to choose which one you'd like to keep. But you can only keep one and you can't keep all three of them. And there is only one right answer. And if you pick the wrong answer, the whole talk falls apart and the application is just wasted. So no pressure, but uh, imagine you're six years old and don't screw this up. Oh, uh, great. Oh, so? Oh, imagine I'm six years old. Great. So whenever you want, you can tell me to stop shuffling them around. Alright, stop. Okay. Would you like to begin by picking cup A, cup B or cup C? I'll choose cup B. Are you sure? Mm, yeah. Okay. Do you want to change your mind? No. Okay. Go ahead and inside there'll be something blue tacked in there. Take it out, have a look and then show everyone at home. 
that that hundred dollar bill. So for those who couldn't see, Josh's face went like <gasps> when he opened the cup. So that's one thing we know of hundred dollar bill. So put it back in the cup, and then put the cup back on the table. That'll do. Good. I'll mix them. No, let me just leave it face up. See, hundred dollars still in there. Okay. Now I'm going to mix around two more, and you can tell me to stop whenever you like. Stop now. Okay. I didn't see that. Good. <laughs> Hold on. No, just a little bit more shuffling. Right. Would you like cup A or cup B? I'll choose cup B. Right. Cup B served you well last time. So let's hope it serves you well again. Alright. I can check it now. Yes, you may check it. Um, cool. Even better than a hundred dollar bill. Oh! <laughs> Even better than a hundred dollar bill. Relationship. 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 The bit of paper says relationships. That's one thing that Josh has to choose from. Okay, and let me shuffle around the last cup just for the sake of shuffling. <laughs> Are you impressed with my amazing shuffling skills with just one cup? Yeah, it's beautiful. Now, this time, would you like cup A, cup A, or cup A? I'll choose cup A. Are you sure? You yeah, don't want to change your mind? It's a pretty hard choice. It is a hard choice. Choose yeah. cup A. Okay. It is a nice $5 bill. So, what Josh has on offer to choose is, I'll just take that bill straight away. He chose them three cups. He can choose a $5 bill, a $100 bill, or, oh, it's still torn but intact. He can choose relationship. Now, Josh, which one would you like to choose? I would like to choose the $100 bill. Thank you for playing it along. You may now go away oh. and wash your hands, please. Well, that didn't quite go to plan, sort of like last week with the exploding fizzy water. But um, what I was hoping Josh would choose. Oh, you can think. I wanted you to choose a $100 No, no, I wanted you to choose relationship. But that is okay. At life and ministry, things go unexpected. But uh, pretend with me that he would have chosen relationship and I'll try and still make sense out of it. In our game with the cups, it was very exciting when Josh first found that hundred dollar bill. His eyes widened, he got excited. But I think it was even more special and he initially did say the phrase that relationship is even better. Now Josh was posed with three choices and unsurprisingly to some he may have chosen the hundred dollar bill. But in the story that's exactly what the man was looking for. This guy was looking for something, a want, but really God gave him what he needed. When I read Jay's reflection last night, I decided to completely rewrite the kids section and go on a different angle because I was really inspired by the words that she had written. Her story helped me to connect on a personal level and it made me feel like I was one of the people in the story, just like Peter or John. I too have felt like Peter recently, during this pandemic lockdown, um, where I've enjoyed the time to leave my apartment to walk around Melbourne City and the Yarra River. In Jay's reflection, she talks about Flinders Street Station having a lot of homeless and disadvantaged people, and that's the same near Southern Cross, on the bridge near the Melbourne Commission Exhibition Centre. It's everywhere. Now, on my walk, I've befriended two homeless people called Charles and Tanya. They both have their same spots, they both sit in the same locations each day, and each time I go by, I make a point of remembering their name and talking with them. Now, Tanya said to me this week, thank you for stopping and remembering me. Now, I don't tell you this story to make myself look good, but I tell you this to show how I've seen firsthand what the power of connecting with someone is and what the power of remembering is. So I wonder this week, within the confines of lockdown, what do you think you can do to connect with others? Children could be as simple as picking up the phone and calling a member here that might be up for a chat. Could it be contacting a friend online? Or could it be when you're out for a walk that you just smile and wave at someone who you're passing by? Whatever you decide to do, know that a smile or a quick call can bring the healing someone doesn't even know that they need. Thanks heaps, Zach. Um, great story. Great story. Thank you, Jack. I wish I had time to tell all my stories too, but never mind. It's all leading in nicely. <laughs> I 
Let's come to God now with a time of confession. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we confess of frittered time, of failing to seize days and even moments to work your will into the way of our lives. We confess to wasted time, failing to focus on what we should be and do to live your love for the sake of others. We confess to squandered time, failing to spend wisely the gifts of days we have to show what matters as followers of Jesus. We confess to to full time, failing to measure the balance of rest and the rhythm of work that you call us to live. All of these things, Lord, we confess to you, asking forgiveness in your name. Amen. So we recognise God's great love for the world revealed in the death and the resurrection of Jesus, who came into the world not to condemn it, but to save it. Those who believe in him are not condemned, and we are continually forgiven. What can we say but thanks be to God. Let's sing together, Deep River. going back over it, but continuing on from it. 
So today our reading from the story of the early church is a story of healing. And this is the first story we are given following on from the coming of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost and the adding of nearly 3,000 people to their movement. The disciples were no longer hiding in their locked room. The companionship of the Spirit was giving them new purpose and courage to be out amongst the people again. The end of chapter 2 tells us that day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And so here are Peter and John travelling to the temple for prayer when they come upon a beggar, a man who was lame from birth, asking for alms at the beautiful gate. Now obviously the beggar didn't realise just who he was asking money for, or money from. In fact, I'm not too sure many people would, at least not at this early stage of the church. Peter and John stop. And the beggar, uh, Peter tells the beggar that they have no money to give, but they will gladly give him what they do have, which is, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the ability to make him stand up and walk. The response of the beggar to jump up was to jump up and begin walking and leaping and praising God shows just how amazing and life-changing that this moment was when Peter and John stopped to speak with him. When we read about these miraculous healings in the Bible, I think most of us pause and wonder just what they mean. Some of us believe very strongly that God can heal us from illness and lack of ability. Some of us need to think a little more deeply about it. And some of us just can't quite make that leap of faith. I believe that God has an amazing ability to work in and on our lives, but we don't always see that presence or feel that touch, so we can miss it. For me, God can never be confined to how we expect God to act. What may be healing to one person is not to another. It may be that the healing we need is not a physical healing, but a deep spiritual one. God is the only one who can know this for sure. Robert Johnson, a colleague of mine, tells of a time when he was a guest preacher at a congregation in Sydney. This congregation would regularly have prayers for healing during their service, and Robert was asked to pray for healing for a man who was diagnosed with terminal cancer and had only a couple of months to live, at least according to his doctors. About three months later, he was again preaching at that congregation, and at the end of the service, the man's wife came to speak to Robert at the door. He fortunately remembered the request for prayer last time that he was there, and so he asked after her husband. He passed away about six weeks after you were here last, was the reply. And Robert wasn't quite too sure what to say next. The woman continued, I want to thank you for your prayers. My husband had been worried about his illness in the future and had become not a very nice man to live with before you prayed for him. After you prayed for him, something changed in him. And that last six weeks of his life were among the best times we ever spent together. I just wanted to say thank you so much for your prayers. This was a different kind of healing. The healing that Peter and John gave, gave was a very public, physical healing of a man who was lame from birth. But think of the healing he received before he could walk and leap and praise God. This beggar was noticed and acknowledged by the disciples. I can imagine Peter kneeling or squatting to be able to look the man in the eyes, just as Jesus had done so many times during his ministry on earth. To be noticed, recognised and given undivided attention is indeed a precious gift. To give a person not just your time but your total attention is to declare that that person matters enough to do that. 
The most crippling modern illness is chronic and profound loneliness. And all of us are beginning to understand just what that feels like in this time of isolation. It racks and ruins spirits to feel utterly alone with no one to give you the time of day or to look you in the eye and genuinely ask how are you is as crippling as any disease that caused the lameness in the beggar at the beautiful gate. Perhaps even more so. Which is why those that take the time and seize the chance to engage in eye to eye and voice to ear are giving a blessing that even in its generosity of spirit is healing. Peter and John gave what they had to give, their attention, their time, their compassion, and their trust that God's will is that broken spirits are healed. That the lame man would leap like a deer was a stunning bonus, but the healing of his heart by their caring was just as important and just as profound. This is exactly what we are challenged to be doing at this time as much as we are able to. To give our time and attention to each other is an amazing act of healing, one that we will never know the true results of. Caring for each other is just one of the acts that the healing spirit can bring at this time. We need to learn from our story today and to take the time to stop and recognise and respect the people we meet, whether they be a beggar or not. Amen. Let's sing together his love within the world.
oh, putting aside your offering, this is this time where we place it in a bowl or we just put it aside. So let us come to God and say thank you. Amazing God, you have given us so many, so much. And we wish to be your eyes and ears in this world. Bless us this day as we set aside money for your work and as we commit ourselves to be your people in this world. This we ask in your name. Amen. Amen. We have um, a number of notices. What have we got up here on the board? So um, next Sunday we have our normal worship online. We are initiating and keeping up to date with this morning tea. It's not going to suit everyone, but for those of you who sought, that will happen at 5 past 11 every Sunday morning. And you will have received that link in the email that went out. If you haven't, just let me know and we'll chase that. Um, and Sonda is online this afternoon. What other notices did we have? Elders meeting. Elders are meeting on Friday via Zoom. Uh, at 7.30, if you haven't received the link, please let me know so I can get that to you. Um, and as we speak, Kelly has just sent me a little text to say that the um, website that she's been working is up and running. So if you head over to murrumbinaunitedorgau you may see a slightly different look. And um, be gentle with us. Getting up new websites is always a challenge. Um, but have a little explore and um, hopefully that will work really, really well. Um, I think, yes, join us for Zoom. So joys and concerns, we've had a list of things that have been given and um, those of you who are online, this is the time to add a little bit extra while I just go through these. Again, a happy birthday to all our birthday people. Um, we are saying our thanks for our teachers as they do their best uh, for our children's learning. We remember and continue to pray for those who have lost their jobs at this time. Um, we pray for Jill who's undergoing cancer treatment and um, we got the name wrong last week so it wasn't Julie, it was Jill. So Jill, we're praying for you. That's the main thing. We also pray with um, heads shaking uh, for the policemen who lost their lives. This And woman, yes sorry, the police people, thank you, who lost their lives um, just this week. Uh, and for their families who are grieving, um, yes, incomprehensible at times. Uh, we remember the history of the Anzac memorials and the way that we have remembered this year and how very special that will be. We uh, think of those of our members who are doing it a bit tough and we think of Lois Bates, Deidre Colbert. We also pray for John Lever's sister Mary who has been diagnosed with COVID-19 in the States. Uh, so we pray for her and her husband, Jean. I don't... Were there... Zach is just sending me something. Okay. Um, it hasn't got to me yet. <laughs> what have you got for me there, Zach? Oh, it's just come out. Thank you. Um, so Georgie, uh, again, talks for the, the friends and families of the um, police people who lost their lives um, and friends and families who are struggling at this. May those people be in our hearts, which I think they are indeed. So for all of these things, Lord, we pray. Let me also continue to pray. Lord, the world we bring to you in prayer is marked by needs that we see and hear in broken lives where illness, grief or tragedy constrain the strands of hope that bind at times the wounds of fear and doubt. The world we bring you in prayer is marked by deeds we see and hear in generous lives where love, mercy and compassion strain the claim so often voiced that you cannot be or cannot be loved. The world we bring in prayer to you knows sorrows and knows joys. We're weeping with the weeping and rejoicing with the rejoicing is your call to us, a measure of our care, a pattern for our love. We pray we measure up and follow the pattern 
leaving no sorrow unaccompanied, leaving no joy unshared. We pray we take the time to look and to listen. The crying hearts are heard, the physical needs are seen, and all know their worth for you is priceless. This, Lord, we pray in your name, confident in the knowledge that you hear us. And so, Father, we add our voice to the voices around the world as we say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Quite often when we stop and think about Anzac Day, we have Dave in the place to play for us. Dave and Erin are up in the country so that Dave can actually play all of his brass instruments without um, interrupting his, his uh, neighbours in their little flat. But he's sent us through this, a time when we stop and remember. Shall we stand? worship we have gathered together. Safe in our places we have raised our voices in praise. Into the healing presence of God we entered. Refreshed and restored we now prepare to leave this place ready to serve. Go now with the blessings of, the God, of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. May they be with you always. Amen.
Oh, oh, oh.